in my junior year, my younger brother, who at the time was 15, he was struck down with transverse myelitis, uh, an inflammatory disease of the spinal cord that paralyzed him. And so he was admitted to the Massachusetts General Hospital. Uh, and fortunately for my younger brother, Philip Dodge had just returned from the Korean War and had been trained as a neurologist. And I was so impressed, as were my parents, with the conduct of Phil Dodge, uh, a brilliant man, but also very gentle, very kind, and it inspired me to, on the one hand, be like Phil Dodge, and secondly, to develop an interest in the nervous system. So I had been mentored by Phil Dodge, and now I suddenly find, in 1978, the opportunity to succeed Sidney Carter. So I've always thought of that as one of the great privileges in my life, to have interacted with the two basic founding fathers of modern child neurology in the United States. Louis Pasteur said in the field of observations, chance favors only the prepared mind. And I've always thought that was important because every day you're probably going to make a meaningful observation. And the question is whether it will register and you take advantage of it. When he was born, I, I sensed this, something wasn't right, even in the hospital. He was very jittery. I could tell it was more so than my daughter's. And the doctor that examined him, he said something like, uh, time will tell. Then he had a seizure at two months that felt like it lasted forever. And um, we took him to the hospital and everything pretty much came back normal except for the spinal taps. He did many spinal taps because the number was so low. And then I kind of panicked because I was like, why doesn't anyone know what this baby has? He told us he was going to refer us to Dr. Daryl DeVivo, a doctor that he had studied under and we were going to be in excellent hands. I first met Joey when he was uh, seven and a half months old in 1989, and he had started developing little jerks of his body, which basically were seizures. The thinking was that uh, Joey probably had a mitochondrial disease, and this doesn't quite fit anything that we are familiar with other than low blood sugars, but there was no evidence that Joey was hypoglycemic. And I said, gee, this must be a defect in the transport of glucose from the blood into the brain. His philosophy, I think, was what was really key, and that was to incorporate science into the art of medicine. So he had all the bedside manners that all the other skilled clinicians had, except that he would inject science into the treatment. And conditions that were unknown didn't seem to phase him. He would try to figure out what the underlying cause of the disorder is. He was the one that discovered the disease. He quickly started writing papers about it. So the, the easiest thing for other doctors to find out about this is through just PubMed through manuscripts that were written by Dr. DeVivo. So really that's how the medical community found out about GLUT1. With GLUT1, the first in human studies were done here, and that's because of Daryl. He's relentless. No is not in his vocabulary. He's kind of soft-spoken, but he's really driven to help kids. In 1991, Dr. DeVivo first described GLUT1 deficiency without really knowing what the cause of the disease was, and then in 1998, the gene for this disease was identified. He developed animal models for the disease. He described the natural history of the disease. He was the first one to come up with the idea of gene replacement therapy for group 1 deficiency syndrome. We've shown in the lab that it works quite well. And our next step is to translate that into a clinical treatment. Even when we didn't have money, people were coming from all around the world to be able to be seen by Dr. DeVivo, to be treated by him. 
He was always very respectful of families and kids. I mean, he, kids would come into his office like any other child going to the doctor. They didn't want to cooperate. They were crying and carrying on. And it was amazing because he was able to get them to quiet down, do what he needed to do for them. I mean, whether it was movement skills or just talking with him or whatever he needed them to do in a neurological session. And he was wonderful at being able to do that. Our baby was having hundreds of seizures a day. I mean, his eyes would roll up. When we went to see Dr. DeVivo, he was so kind and just felt so comfortable with him. And then right away, he had a solution. They would introduce the ketogenic diet, something that we had never heard of 34 years ago. And after three days, he said his seizures would stop. And we went to the hospital. Everything went as Dr. DeVivo said. And after three days, the seizures stopped. We began our journey with like the best <laughs> doctor ever. He's brilliant, he's amazing, he's uh, so supportive. If we didn't have him, I don't know how we would have gotten through it. At this particular juncture, I think the greatest priority is to try to take the ideas and the experiments that we began with Dr. DeVivo to their logical conclusion. We are at a point now where we have the ketogenic diet as the standard of care, which we've had since the beginning. We have people exploring the possibility of using lactic acid in one form or another. Dr. Manani, who's been working with me for almost 20 years, is now director of our laboratory, and others in our group have been working very hard on gene therapy for the last several years. And we finally had a very meaningful breakthrough now. And I think we've finally gotten very close. Dr. DeVivo decided that he would endow a chair at Columbia and in the Department of Neurology to continue his, his legacy and to inspire younger people in the field to find treatments for these devastating diseases that society has to live with. And so he established this chair. And I have had the greatest privilege of holding this chair. I am the inaugural DeVivo Professor of Neurology in the department. And I think it's fair for a number of us, me included, to say that we owe our careers to Dr. DeVivo. It's been, it's been a fantastic ride. I mean, it's, it really has been wonderful. There's much more that we still can do. The focus of attention should at least be equally on the ability of the child as well as the disability. Try to identify what your child's strength is. Don't focus so much on the weakness. Stay strong. Know that more hope is coming, but that we love you as you are, because each and every one of us is special and each and every one of us has something very meaningful to contribute. And I've learned more from you than you're ever gonna learn from me. So I thank you for letting me be part of your life. We will forever hold him in our hearts because He's meant so much to us and he's done so much for us. We are so, so lucky to be able to, to know him and to have him guide us in this journey. We are very grateful for him. He's changed our lives. If it weren't for him, I don't know where my son would be today. And um, I'm just really, really grateful for him. Dear Dr. Nabibo, thank you for giving us all hope. Your passion and drive to help Drew and others will be greatly cherished. Love, the Hemlocks. Thank you, Dr. DeVivo, for your kindness and all your knowledge. Then go. Thank you, Dr. DeVivo, for helping me to achieve my dream of becoming a child neurologist. You have had a profound impact, and I thank you for everything you've done for our patients and for me. Um, I hope you'll enjoy your retirement, but uh, you will not be forgotten. Thank you, Dr. DeVivo, for changing my life for the better. Thank you for everything you have done for us and the entire Group One community. 
Thank you, Dr. Vivo, for being an amazing mentor and a friend who opened my eyes for new state of opportunity and strength. I will forever be grateful for your guidance and kindness. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our whole family dynamics changed after Jacob got diagnosed with GLUT1, and we will be forever grateful. Thank you, Dr. DeVivo, for changing my life for the better. Thank you, Dr. DeVivo, for being a great mentor and teacher. Thank you, Dr. DeVivo. We want to sincerely thank you and your incredible team for discovering GLUT1 deficiency, also advancing the science, and in particular, in helping to diagnose our son Dalton. Uh, which really enabled us to give him the best life possible. Thank you, Dr. DeVivo, for your mentoring and great support over the past 10 years. Thank you, Dr. DeVivo, for everything. Thank you, Dr. DeVivo, for inviting us from Wales to be part of your Group 1 research project 20 years ago when Cleo was seven. You gave us hope. Thank you.